Welcome to Counter Narrative News, bringing you daily news today on Monday, the 23rd of January 2023. Going to India, the BBC has just released a documentary critiquing and exposing elements of the far right BJP Modi government in India. It focuses on issues, things, things like the Indian farmers' uh, movement for justice and their year long strike, the repression in Kashmir, the policies of Islamophobia including the the rape and lynching around the 2002 Gujarat riots in which Modi is implicated. The Modi administration has responded by attempting to quote-unquote ban the documentary in India, instructing social media to remove it from their platforms, which most of them have obliged, which is a which is a really bit of a self-defeating approach from the Modi government, because on the one hand, the hyper-defensiveness indicates some level of culpability and guilt complex and also censoring it in the manner in which they're doing just brings more attention to the documentary itself. Also the the BJP leadership and followers claim some kind of British colonial bullying in regards to this and what has happened. However the BJP government has very good relations with the far-right Tory government in London. And indeed, Rishi Sunak and other leaders of the Tories are positively in solidarity and defend Modi and the BJP project. So claims of some kind of colonial uh, bullying just uh, remain quite hollow and strange in that regard. Going to the USA and in relation to Russia, the USA is planning to designate the Wagner uh, private military company as an international criminal organization. Perosian, who runs Wagner, is very close to Vladimir Putin, and it's a parallel military force of the Russian state, deployed very much so in Ukraine in tens of thousands of numbers, 80% plus of which are forced recruits from the Russian prison system, as we have uh, reported on recently, including jailed Africans in Russia who end up dead in the theater of conflict in Ukraine, pointing to a very disturbing trend and reflecting on the deeply white supremacist, violent, racist nature of the Russian state, its armed forces and its culture, and of the Wagner Group itself, which is also implicated in massacre against civilians and others across Africa. In connection to that, also going to Africa in Burkina Faso, the the new regime in Burkina Faso, led by Ibrahim Traoré, has called upon the French military presence, of which they had a deal from 2018, to to leave the country within a month. The new coup leaders and a lot of their supporters in Burkina Faso are arguing that they're conducting this because they feel that the French military presence has not really seen any progress in opposing death squads in the, in the in the form of Daesh there. One is not so sure that Russia's military penetration into Africa, and particularly of the violently racist Wagner Group, which is conducting massacres all over the place and conducting its own neo-colonial looting of African labor and natural wealth, will do anything particularly uh, better comparatively than the French neo-colonial presence there. Russia does not have the same colonial past, as the French and other European colonizing powers, that's true. But also Russia today is not the Soviet Union and the Russian leadership in Putin and Lavrov like to somewhat manipulatively use the Soviet legacy in Africa, which was definitely uh, relatively a much healthier relationship that actually sought uh, independence and socialism in Africa to to the neo-colonial relationship of Russia and Africa today. It's argued by many, and there's, that there's definitely a, a, some a substance to this, that some states in Africa are replacing one neo-colonial power for another. Russia is not going to answer the needs and the concerns of the people of any African state, and not Burkina Faso, as we go forward. And our prediction is that that will be proven to be the case in the not-too-distant future. Finally, going to Latin America and Peru, protests are, are still continuing against the right-wing regime there. The armed police have raided the San Marcos University in Lima, which was used by students and others as a base for protesting against the regime there. 
over 100 people have been arrested on the campus, leading to further protests from the students. It's quite clear in Peru that nothing can hold back the protest movement until they win their strategic demands. That's daily news from Counter Narrative News coming to an end. Please continue to encourage your contacts and friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at counter underscore CNN. Please do continue to like, comment and give us feedback. We wish you all the best.